okay, maybe we can we can start um, since there are already uh, many people here. Um, so welcome everyone to uh, the Combinatorics Physics and Probability Seminar Series. Um, so today we're happy to have here Ran Tesler to, from the Weizmann Institute of Science uh, talking about the amplitude hydron um, VCFW triangulation. Um, and so it will uh, explain us the uh, proof of the conjecture that the collection of VCFW cells are triangulating the amplitude hydron, which was very important and, and crucial somehow in the formulation of the amplitude hydron itself in connection with scattering amplitudes in N equals four superior Mills theory. Um, which was um, appeared in 2013 uh, by Arkani Ahmed and Trenka. Um, so please feel free to start. Happy to have you here. So uh, thanks, Matteo. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the introduction and uh, for the invitation. Um, so uh, as Matteo said, I will talk about uh, um, uh, my recent work with uh, my colleagues and friends, uh, Jaime Ventor and Svika Lakritz. Um, in which we uh, prove that the BCFW cells triangulate the amplitude hydron. Um, okay, I, I guess that maybe in this audience there are uh, both experts and people who um, uh, don't know very much uh, uh, about um, all the theory of the amplitude hydron. So I will try um, not to go too slow for the experts, but also not uh, uh, too fast for uh, those uh, for, we, for whom uh, these things are uh, new. Um, so um, let's start with some uh, background. So the Grassmannian is the classifying space of the uh, k-dimensional vector subspaces of Rn. And uh, um, we can represent an element of the Grassmannian, meaning a vector space, by a, um, by a matrix whose rows span the vector space. This representation is not unique, but it is unique up to uh, the left action by GLK. And uh, given a uh, um, k set of uh, indices, we can define the Plucker coordinate for a matrix C, just to be the determinant of the uh, um, maximal minor uh, whose columns are indexed by these uh, indices. Now, <clears throat> the collection of Plucker coordinates, uh, um, although it is not well defined on the uh, vector space, it does uh, descend to the uh, Grassmannian as projective coordinates. Um, and we define the totally non-negative Grassmannian as the subspace of the Grassmannian in which uh, uh, all uh, um, Plucker coordinates uh, are non-negative or have the same sign. Um, so we can decompose the non-negative uh, Grassmannian according to uh, um, which uh, in, into, into subsets defined according to which Plucker coordinates are zero and which are positive. And um, well, I should say that the totally non-negative Grassmannian is an instant of a totally non-negative flag variety, which is uh, um, a topic initiated by Lustig and then studied by uh, uh, many others. Um, now, in particular, Posnikov um, uh, studied extensively uh, the case of the uh, Grassmannian, and um, he showed that the non-empty cells of the uh, Grassmannians are homeomorphic to open balls, um, whose dimension can also be calculated from the uh, matroidal data of which Plucker coordinates are zero. And um, he also discovered ways to index them by several uh, combinatorial objects, such as the uh, um, equivalence classes of uh, um, reduced plabi graphs, lead diagrams, decorated permutations, and more. Um, there are several ways to construct a uh, positroid cells, but one that will be uh, especially useful for us is a, a, a sequential uh, way that, uh, as far as I know, is due to LAM, um, which uh, um, allows constructing positive cells as sequences of um, operations of various types. So the first type is adding a zero column at the i's position, what we call pre-i, following uh, physicists. Um, the second operation adds not only a column, it adds also a row, and all the new entries are zero except for a single one which is in the intersection. And note that we also change the sign of the um, sub-matrix, which is to the right of the added uh, column. And uh, two more operations are XIT, 
uh, for real or positive uh, 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 T, which adds T times the ice column to its right neighboring column. And uh, um, so, so when, whenever T is positive, then uh, uh, this map preserves the uh, non-negative Osmanian. And similarly, we have uh, the uh, uh, analogous dual map uh, um, YIT. Okay, not dual in the uh, standard sense, but uh, we, this map adds the, uh, uh, the right neighbor of the ice, T times the right neighbor of the ice column to the ice column. And um, uh, given a positive cell which is constructed uh, um, by sequence of such operations, um, then under certain minimality assumptions, um, we, can, we can actually read from the sequence the um, decorated permutation uh, um, which correspond, which is associated to, associated to it by a post uh, uh, theorem. Um, so now, now let's move to the uh, amplitude add-on. By the way, I, I didn't say, but uh, um, of course you may stop me for questions or for comments uh, at any time. Um, okay, so the amplitude hydron was defined by uh, Arkani Hamed and Franka uh, um, uh, eight or nine years ago. And uh, it is defined as follows. So let K, M, and N be natural numbers so that N is at least K plus M. And let V be a positive matrix uh, of size N times K plus M. So by a positive matrix, I mean a matrix all of whose maximal minors are positive. Uh, the true amplitude hydron a n k m of z is uh, the image of the non-negative Grassmannian under uh, um, the map defined by right multiplication with z. So, okay, so I define this map on representatives, but because the multiplication is, is from the right, it commutes with the left GLK action. That's uh, the first comment. Um, still, it could been the case that, that uh, the rank of the resulting matrix would be less than K, but the positivity of Z and of the, uh, non uh, the elements of the non-negative Grossmannian uh, uh, actually prevent uh, this from happening and the image is indeed in uh, um, the Grossmannian K, K plus K. So um, a few basic properties. Uh, uh, the, first of all, the amplitude hydron is a compact connected space of dimension uh, Km. I, I don't want to say um, a more accurate statement uh, um, uh, uh, at the moment, at least. Um, now, for any uh, um, M set of indices, we can define uh, the so-called twister coordinate, which generalizes uh, uh, the Plucker coordinate. Uh, so, we, we, uh, so given I want to Im, uh, M indices, we and the K times K plus M matrix Y, the twister coordinate is defined as the determinant of the square matrix obtained by taking Y, joining to it the I1 to the IM, so we get a, a square matrix, and taking it determinant. And it turns out that these coordinates are a, a very natural from the point of view of the amplitude um, Okay, so some more background. Uh, the amplitude was defined by Arkani Hamed and Franka in their study of scattering amplitudes with planar n equal four super and mill theory, where they observed that scattering amplitudes correspond to, well, more or less to volumes of uh, m equal four amplitude hydra. On the other hand, um, a few years before, a, a, another way was discovered to calculate the scattering amplitude. Um, okay. There was always a classical way uh, uh, using Feynman uh, uh, calculus, but uh, a few years before the discovery of the amplitude hydron, a, 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 a recursion modulation uh, called the BCFW recursion was discovered and it allowed calculating uh, the same scattering amplitude. Um, now, in terms of the amplitude hydron, the, this recursion uh, corresponds to the following. A, a triangulation or conjecture concerning triangulation uh, of the amplitude hydron, which uh, um, conjectures as follows. So um, a certain collection of positroid cells uh, in the KN uh, non-negative Grassmannian, which are called the BCFW cells, triangulate the amplitude hydron, whereby triangulation 
I mean that uh, each of these cells map bijectively, the images are disjoint, and uh, the closures of images cover the between one. So he, there could be, th there are also other uh, uh, stronger definitions of, uh, um, of uh, uh, triangulations, and at least some of them actually also work uh, for this uh, self. Um, so, okay, so sketching with the proof of this uh, conjecture is the, is the purpose of this uh, talk today. Um, before I get to it, uh, let me um, um, describe some uh, special uh, cases uh, of, of uh, the amplitude and of uh, um, triangulations of it. So when n is k plus m, the amplitude is just the non-negative uh, Grassmannian, and it has a uh, um, triangulation by a single cell, the big cell of the non-negative Grassmannian. Um, the k equal one amplitude is the projective cyclic polytop. Um, its uh, uh, triangulations were studied by uh, Rambau and others. The m equal one amplitude is a monomorphic to the complex of bounded faces of cyclic hyperplane radiance, the result by Carter and Williams, who also uh, uh, studied uh, its triangulations. Uh, Galashin and Laum proved uh, a certain duality between triangulations of a n k m and of a n n minus k minus n m. And okay, another fact or conjecture that is not directly related, maybe to triangulation, is that um, while I described the amplitude as the image of Sama, there are also a, a, at least conjectural or in some cases conjectural. Uh, um, descriptions of it um, uh, uh, directly as a subspace of the uh, ambient space of the Grassmannian KK plus M. So uh, uh, Arkan Hamid, Thomas, and Franka uh, gave such a conjectural uh, description, which, uh, um, okay, I, I know that uh, it was proven when for M equal to, um, uh, so I think by Arkan Hamid, Thomas, Franka, and Parisi, uh, Sherman Bennett Williams. I'm not sure that also for them equal one, but if I remember correctly, also in this case. Um, okay, so, so now let's uh, um, move to um, one, one step closer to the topic of our talk, and let's discuss a little bit the M equal two uh, theory. So there were various uh, beautiful works on this uh, uh, case, um, which revealed a uh, rich uh, and uh, interesting mathematics. So Bau and He proved that the uh, collections of cells, which are analogous to the BCFW cell, triangulate the M equal to one of the two And Lukowski, Parisi, Spardin, and Volovich uh, made conjectures about which cells uh, map bijectively to the amplitudeidron. Uh, conjectures that were proven later by Parisi, Sherman, Bennett, and Williams. And I would like to highlight two points in this proof. So, um, one point is that uh, uh, towards proving uh, this result, uh, uh, they showed that uh, um, those cells which map bijectively uh, have certain um, canonical, uh, uh, okay, canonical form maybe is a dangerous word in this field, but they have special representatives uh, um, um, which resemble uh, uh, um, the, the Castelline uh, theory from uh, Dymo models. That was that's one point that uh, I wanted uh, to highlight. And the other is that uh, they also showed that uh, um, the images of those cells which map objectively uh, can be described um, as the subset of the Grassmannian uh, in which certain twist or coordinates have certain um, fixed signs. Uh, it is important for me to stress this point because uh, um, at least for the BCFW triangulation in M equal four, um, I, I, I think it's fair to say that these two points uh, generalize in a, in a non-trivial way, but uh, let's see, um, they generalize. Um, so now let's talk about the M equal four. So on this subject, there were uh, less works, but still there were a few uh, uh, nice results. So first of all, Karp, Williams, and Zhang provided a non-recursive description for a, a combinatorial objects which label the BCFW cell. Um, 
actually from this description, although it was not written directly in the paper, from this description one can actually read, for example, the decorated permutation um, that correspond to the B6W cells. So for us, actually, that will be the, the um, contact point to, to, um, to our work. And uh, together with Thomas, they conjecture that elements in the B6W cells have special representatives called uh, domino representatives. Um, and they proved the existence of, of this form for k equal 2 and used it to show that in k equal 2, uh, the cells, um, the BCFW cells, indeed map bijectively to the amplitudoidron and that uh, different cells uh, map to uh, this joint uh, uh, subset of the Gassmann. Okay, so other questions uh, so far? Okay. So I will now uh, move to uh, describe our proof. So um, we start by proving the domino conjecture uh, um, by uh, uh, Karp, uh, Williams, Chang, and uh, uh, Thomas. Uh, so for this, um, I want to uh, describe another object that uh, um, we use to label BCFW cells. So it doesn't label general uh, positroids, but uh, it is very much suited to the um, combinatoric algebra and geometry of uh, BCFW cells, and that is chord diagram. So instead of giving the accurate uh, uh, definition and saying uh, several times uh, words like isotopy, um, a chord diagram is an object like in this picture, so it's a collection of uh, chords. Uh, um, drawn uh, uh, to connect segments uh, um, on a real numbered uh, line, um, where we put some conditions on the chords. So first of all, no two chords intersect, and no two chords have tails in the same, same segment. So the tail of a chord is the leftmost uh, um, in segment which contains it, uh, uh, which, which, in which it touches. Uh, so we, we allow two chords to have the same head, so the head is the rightmost uh, uh, um, segment, but we don't allow them to, have, uh, to, start, to start at the same position. Um, the tail and the head of a chord do not overlap. So this means, for example, that um, the shortest possible uh, chord uses four markers. For example, look at this three in this picture. So it uses four, five, six, and seven, but we don't have a chord which uses less. Um, and all chords end before N, so no chord use the last, the rightmost uh, segment. Okay, so um, then there is some natural terminology for chord diagrams. So for example, a top chord is a chord which is not covered by any other chord. So in this example, C1, C4, and C6 are top chords. A, an ancestor is a, a, so a chord is an ancestor of another chord if it covers it. And in this case, the other chord is its descendant. A direct ancestor is a parent and the direct descendant is a child. So for example, C6 is an ancestor of C8, but it is not its parent because its parent is C7, and which is a, a, a child of C6. Okay. And uh, to each chord diagram we associate a, a domino matrix, which is a, a formal, uh, or, a, or a, okay, it is a formal matrix, which depends on 5K real variables. And again, I think that it will be more useful instead of giving the definition, um, just uh, uh, demonstrating it in an example. So um, in our core diagram, um, each, so, so we have eight chords and 18 markers. So K in this case eight will be the number of, uh, um, of chords and rows in the matrix. And n, in this case, 18, will be the number of uh, columns. Now, each chord uh, is supported on four markers, the head and the tail. And in these four markers, we put uh, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta with the index of the chord. So for example, for C1, its tail is uh, 1, 2, and we put alpha 1, beta 1 in this location while its head is a six, seven, and then we put gamma one, delta one. Now, if the chord is a top chord, meaning that uh, um, it is not covered by any other chord, 
then we, um, we, we, we put epsilon one in the end position, in the rightmost position. Um, if it is not a top chord, then the, actually there will be zero in the rightmost position. For example, look at uh, C3. But we put uh, um, a, a epsilon times the, um, the, the domino of the parent. So for example, the parent of C3 is uh, um, C1. So we put in the, uh, in the tail location one, two, epsilon three, which is the epsilon which corresponds to third chord, times the, the tail domino of C1, which is alpha one, beta one. So we have epsilon three, alpha one, and epsilon three, beta one. Um, it could be that there will be some overlap between the, the tail of the parent and of the child, like we see for chord two. So really in chord two, in the second position, on the one end we have alpha two, which is what, uh, uh, um, what should be, be there because of C2. But we also have the domino contributed by the parent, which gives epsilon two beta one. So that's why we have epsilon two beta one plus alpha two. Um, okay, so are there questions about uh, this um, score? Okay, so um, we, we, we put some uh, constraints on the, uh, on the variables which appear in the domino form. These constraints will turn out to be the exact constraints needed in order for the uh, represented matrix to be uh, non-negative and in the in the right positroid. So these constraints are, uh, come in two flavors. The first is some sign constraints on the variables alpha to delta, sorry, um, alpha to epsilon. And uh, these constraints, uh, if we make the analogy with the N equal to work, for those of you who know it or who wrote it, uh, um, uh, so, so there we also had a, a similar constraints, but there they were the only constraints. It turns out that in the M equal four case, there are also constraints on uh, the two by two minors, on some of them. So I, I wrote these constraints as uh, um, some inequalities between ratios, but of course they can be uh, um, re rewritten as uh, um, uh, constraints regarding the signs of some two by two determinants. So, um, we have these constraints in two cases. First of all, whenever we have a child and a parent which end at the same head, then we have some constraints on the... Uh, so in this case, we will have a, a sub-matrix uh, which is uh, of size two by two, and we will put, uh, I mean, in the, in the respective places, and we will put some uh, sign constraints on, on it. And the second case is uh, when the head of one chord is the tail of another one, and then we have some other uh, sign constraints. So I, I, I don't think it will be you know, useful to explain uh, exactly the origin of each one, but, but the, the, what one should take from it is that we have uh, really a, a constraints on uh, one times one minors and on two plus two minors. So, um, okay, so the first theorem is, uh, um, okay, with uh, with uh, Chaim Avetzor and Zvika Lakres, like all uh, the other results I will mention in this talk, uh, is the following. So let S be a BCFW cell. And first of all, any uh, element in S, any vector space which belongs to the cell has a unique domino representation, where by unique, I mean unique up to uh, scaling the rows. And moreover, any domino matrix which satisfies the sign rules represents a point in S. So, so it really gives a, a perfect description of a depositroid. Um, now, the, the proof builds on an iterative algorithm for constructing the BCFW cell, um, where the input uh, for, for, the, uh, for the algorithm is a core diagram and 4K positive variables, while the output is a matrix in domino form, which satisfies the sign rules and uh, corresponds to I mean, in, in the domino form, which corresponds to the diagram. And uh, um, what we show is that fixing the diagram, the resulting space is really a positroid of the expected dimension 4K. And um, if you remember my comment in the beginning that uh, um, 
sometimes from uh, sequences of, uh, um, so sometimes when we construct positrons in a sequential way, there is, there is a, a, a way to deduce from it uh, the decorative permutation. So, well, we can do it in this case, and uh, um, we can compare the decorated permutation that we get uh, with the one uh, obtained by uh, the KW0, and, and we prove that uh, it is the same decorated permutation, meaning that really uh, not only we constructed the domino representation, it is really a domino representation for the BCFW cell. So um, I think that uh, um, maybe it will be most instructive uh, um, to um, demonstrate again in an example uh, um, how this algorithm looks like. So this algorithm goes from right to left and start constructing the, the, um, uh, um, the, the matrix. Left um, to right. Um, left, right to left, sorry. Right to left, yes. Um, well, the, maybe you look at the uh, lecture from the other side. Um, so, okay. So, uh, um, okay. So, this core diagram is associated with the following matrix uh, in, in a domino form. Um, now, so, and, and we will describe uh, really the algorithm how to construct it. We will start with C1, but note that because C1 uh, uh, covers C2 and C3, when we go right to left, we will not uh, finish seeing all C1 before we, we see C2 and C3. And that's why, although we will start constructing the row which corresponds to C1, we will not finish it in, uh, uh, in the first uh, step. Okay, so the algorithm goes like this. We start with the, um, empty set times a, a singleton a, a, at n matrix, and we make some space, we add a, a few columns. We then construct a part of the row of C1. So first of all, we apply ink2, which gives us this matrix. And then we add a multiple of the second column to its right neighboring column, obtaining this matrix. We then uh, um, take uh, 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 the product of the 11 column to its neighbor, which gives us uh, uh, this uh, uh, sub, uh, submatrix. And then we uh, uh, add uh, also a, a, a product of the first column to its left neighbor column. So everything is cyclic and we get uh, this, uh, sorry, this matrix. Okay, and then we turn to C3 we um, act in similar manner and we obtain uh, 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 this matrix. And then we turn to C2, which will be uh, 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 the last new code, but it will correspond to the middle, to the middle uh, um, row actually. And we get this matrix, but we didn't finish it because first of all, we didn't uh, go to the uh, uh, tail of C1 yet. And also note that um, Although we have most of the domino form, we still don't have the domino contributed by a, a C1 to its, to its a, a children. So this what happens in the last step, um, which gives us a, a, this a matrix. And, uh, um, okay, and it can be seen that uh, the, the obtained matrix is really in the required form and that uh, it satisfies uh, the sign rules. And as I said, we can actually also uh, calculate the corresponding decorative permutation and see that it agrees with the one uh, uh, given by uh, KW. Uh, okay, so other questions uh, about, um, I mean, is this the general idea that I showed here? Okay, so I will uh, uh, continue and um, we will now use this, uh, um, the, the domino form to prove injectivity. Um, okay, so the next uh, goal is to show that uh, each BCFW cell, cell maps bijectively to, uh, um, to uh, 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 amplitude one. So the proof goes by constructing a pre-image 
for the point that is in the image of the BCFW cell. And we do it uh, row by row according to the nesting order. So we'll start from the parent and we'll go to its descendant. Um, we use the following simple uh, observation. So for vectors V1 to V5 in uh, RK plus four and uh, a K vector space Y in RK plus four, first of all, the intersection of uh, v, the span of V1 and V5 with Y uh, uh, is generically a line. And moreover, this line can be written in this way. Well, again, the uh, tri uh, triangular brackets correspond to taking the determinant of the matrix obtained by adding uh, Y. Okay, so you see, I, I identify Y as a matrix and Y as a vector space, but I, I mean, if it bothers someone, uh, just, uh, I, I will stop with this uh, bad habit. Um, but uh, uh, so, so we take Y, we add to it uh, four of the five vectors and uh, take the determinant, and th this gives us the, uh, the coefficient of the i. Now we will use it to uh, um, construct each row uh, um, of the matrix sequentially. So let me start with the top rows. So top rows, they have five non-zero entries at positions i, i plus one, j, j plus one, and n. So i plus one is the, uh, the tail, j, j plus one is the head, and n. So this means that if y is, is pz, then the else uh, um, row of y is on the one hand spanned by vi, vi plus one, vj, vj plus one, and vn. But on the other hand, it belongs to the uh, row span of y. So we can apply the observation and uh, uh, deduce that, it's, uh, uh, that the entries are precisely these twistors. Okay, so we, we use the fact that top row, the, uh, the, they have four uh, degrees of freedom. Okay, now what, what about descendants? So descendants may also have support of type five. This happens uh, precisely when uh, um, um, uh, uh, its tail overlaps with the tail of the parent in, in, in one position. And then we can uh, act as before. But it could also be that, uh, um, that the support is of type six and then Naively, we could say that we have too many degrees of freedom. Um, because because uh, um, in, in the observation above, uh, um, if, if we had six vectors, then the intersection would have been a plane. However, um, the situation is, is simpler than this because uh, if CL has uh, six non zero entries, they are in positions H, H plus one, which are the uh, tail of the parents, I, I plus one, and JJ plus one. Now, the, uh, the corresponding row in Y will be, as before, a linear combination of VI, VI plus one, VJ, VJ plus one, and some linear combination of VH and VH plus one. But we know which linear combination it will be because we already, so the, uh, um, we know that, that uh, uh, the HH H plus one uh, entries of CL are proportional to those of the parents, and we calculated it already for the parents. So effectively, again, we have only five vectors. So again, we can apply the observation and uh, find the free image. I should say that uh, there is something that I uh, I hide here. So th there is the word generic. Now, being generic means in this context, that uh, not all the five uh, uh, coefficients, not all the five, those five uh, twist-like uh, uh, expressions, vanish. Um, one one point that, that sh should be shown during uh, throughout the proof is, is really that that um, the corresponding expressions uh, um, uh, uh, that we obtain do not vanish. So, um, well, we we used in the paper for it the um, uh, methods of function arrays that I will soon describe, but I should actually say that that, that, that was an overkill. Actually, uh, um, if I remember correctly, in, in all the cases, we, can, we could have just proved it uh, directly. Uh, um, um, but, but anyway, it was, it was uh, um, well, uh, a, a warm up emphasize for uh, the power of a function arrays. Um, so, okay, so, if there are no questions uh, on the injectivity, 
I would like to um, describe a, a separation, which um, I consider uh, as uh, perhaps the um, key, key part of, uh, of this point of this work. Okay. So, um, okay, so the next uh, theorem is uh, uh, the separation, meaning that for any two different BCFW cells, uh, their images do not intersect. And um, as I said, um, in order to prove it, we developed a, 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 the notion of functionaries. So a functionary is a homogeneous polynomial in twist or coordinates. And um, our method for proving the, the, uh, the separation um, generalized uh, 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 the method of uh, uh, Parisi, Sherman, Benton, Williams, who showed that in the M equal two case, uh, there are separating twistors between different cells, meaning for any two cells which do not intersect, one can find a, a, a witness uh, uh, which is a twister, a twister which has uh, one sign on one of them and uh, the opposite sign on the other. Uh, in the M equal four case, twistors are not enough to, to separate. However, it turns out that functionaries are enough. And uh, um, that there are, okay, there are enough functionaries to separate, but they're also flexible enough that we can, that we can really uh, um, even construct them explicitly. Um, okay, so okay, so I think that um, okay, so because of time, so actually, Mateo, how much time uh, do, do we have? Um, I think you have uh, uh, fifteen minutes or uh, twenty minutes oh. for me. But if you want to leave time for questions, then I see. Minutes. So, so you know what? Maybe, maybe I will. So these two slides are a bit more, uh, so uh, more technical. Maybe I will jump over them and, and again uh, uh, go to examples. But of course, any, if someone would like to see them later, then, then I will just go back to them. So, uh, um, okay, I will just say what I will not say. Uh, so uh, uh, the content of the next two, next two, two uh, uh, slides is uh, um, uh, to, to explain how, um, how we can control uh, um, how we can control uh, um, functionaries, and in particular, how they are promoted under the basic operations of the theory. So, uh, um, as I said, the, the, uh, um, there are four basic operations, pre i, inc i, x i, and y i, and, uh, um, and um, okay, uh, forgive me for a second, I have neighbors uh, uh, do hello from the window. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, okay. So um, okay. And and uh, this is how, we, starting from twistors, we can get more general functions which have a, a constant sign on uh, um, on 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 different cells and uh, um, and uh, uh, which allows us to separate. So. Uh, Okay, I, I, if, you, if you want, we can go back to it in the part of discussion or, or not, whatever you want. Um, so, so but, but now let's see how we can use the functionality to separate. So we use an inductive argument. So let uh, uh, SD and SD prime be two cells that we want to separate, which correspond to two chord diagrams D and D prime. Now, the first case is that D and D prime do not have chords ending at n minus two and minus one. Um, so by induction, there is a separating functionary for the um, smaller chord diagrams obtained by erasing the marker n minus one. We don't use it, so we don't care about it. And it turns out that the same functionary separates between uh, S, D and S, D prime. Now you could say, how can I talk about a, a, the same function applied to different spaces, but it's like with twistor coordinates. You can you can define the twistor coordinate i, j, k, l to any a, 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 whenever your index set contains i, j, k, and l. 
So uh, th that, that's what I mean by saying that uh, the same functionally uh, separate uh, um, two different two, two cells which come from different spaces. Um, okay, a, a, a more interesting case is when D has a chord which ends at the right most possible position, but D prime doesn't. So um, okay, so let me let me uh, draw an example. So suppose this is a D. And uh, um, and uh, uh, it has it has a, a chord which ends here. I remind you that we cannot use the last segment. And the D prime, it has a, a, it doesn't have any chord which ends there, but but it have some other chords, some other places. So. Um, it turns out that in this case, we can separate the two cells using, um, using a linear twister, um, where actually I can tell you explicitly who's, who is this twister. So I should tell you who are, um, who are uh, i and i plus one. So in this case, i and i plus one will just be the tail of the top chord, which ends at n minus two and minus one. In this case, it will be four and five. Um, okay, um, just a second, okay. So now let's move to even more uh, interesting case. So suppose now that the two diagrams both have a chord which ends at the rightmost position, n minus two and minus one. But let's assume that um, the two, so if they have a chord which ends at uh, the rightmost position, also has a, a top code which ends there. So let's assume that the two top codes, the one in D and the one in D prime, which end there, do not have the same, uh, um, don't have the same tail. Okay, so for example, we are in uh, this situation. So that's D. And here it has other things which I don't know what they are. Here it has other things which I don't know what they are. And uh, um, for example, D prime can be this. So it turns out that no matter what are the other chords, in this case, we can always uh, uh, separate these two diagrams using a quadratic functionally, um, where the indices i and j are again the tails of the, uh, the two top chords. Okay, and, and the proof of it, well, it uses a, a, this part I jumped on of, of a, a evolution of the functionaries, and also it uses, a, well, the construction algorithm that I described earlier for domino matrices. Um, so the combination of these two um, is somehow strong enough to provide a lot of uh, uh, different uh, functionaries. Um, Okay, so now we are only left with the case uh, that, uh, um, that uh, um, the two cells have the same top chord, uh, the same rightmost top chord. Um, wait, oh, ah, sorry, okay. Um, so in this case, well, we can we can consider. Ah, now, now I regret that I write the uh, picture, so I will draw it again. So in this case, okay. So both of them, both D and D prime, they have a top chord, let's say of this form. And uh, uh, but the two chord diagrams are different. So let's say that here we have uh, seven, eight, not eight, nine. Truly. Ah. Sorry, would you hear fine? So, so we have X and X prime and Y and Y prime. Now since D and D prime are different, at least either X differs from X prime or Y differs from Y prime. Um, Let's say y differs from y prime, 
then there is a separating functionality and we can we can promote it according to the well promotion mechanism uh, I didn't describe. Uh, similarly, if X and X prime uh, uh, are different, then again, there is a separating functionary and we can uh, uh, again promote it uh, uh, to get to get uh, uh, a separating functionary for the uh, complete diagram. So in, in general, you see that also the uh, uh, degree of the functionary uh, depends uh, somehow on the next on the nesting uh, uh, structure. Oh, I should say that by the way, usually the, the, the separating functionary is not unique. Unless, of course, uh, um, uh, um, the two cells are cells. Okay, so this shows us um, the uh, uh, separation between cells. So we are now left only with um, uh, showing surjectiveness, um, meaning that the closure of uh, uh, VCFW cells together cover the, uh, the amplitude zone. Um, Okay, so the proof ideas as follows. Um, first of all, we identify all co-dimension one boundaries of the cell. Then we show that each boundary either maps to the boundary of the amplitude or it belongs to two different cells. And we deduce a uh, subjectivity using a topological argument. Um, so, okay, Matthias, sorry for asking all those questions, but uh, how much time do I have now? Um, you have 12 minutes uh, for the complete hour, or if you want to leave time for questions a bit more, a bit less. 10 minutes, okay. So, uh, um, okay, so, so I, I will use five of them. Um, okay, so, okay, so co-dimension one boundaries of the VCFW cells, and um, they can be read from the domino form. And it is seen that they all correspond either to the vanishing of some entry or to the vanishing of a two by two minor. Now, some of these boundaries, they, they are seen to map to the boundary of the um, amplitude one, as I said before, while others uh, um, are also boundaries of another cell. Now, what is nice about the core diagram description is um, that it also tells you that when you have two, na two neighboring cells, meaning two cells which share a co-dimension one boundary, the code diagrams will also be pretty similar. Uh, by that I mean that they will be the same code diagram up to some shift operation uh, um, that is applied to one of the codes. So let's do a few examples. The first example is a uh, um, K equal one, meaning that we have one chord, and let's take the uh, chord diagram one, two, five, six. I, I, I didn't want to draw it because I was afraid that time will interrupt, so uh, I, I will just uh, show the uh, matrix form. So uh, the domino form of, of uh, uh, such, uh, um, such matrix is uh, alpha one, beta one, at the first two locations, then we have zero, zero, because we jump over three, four, then gamma one, delta one, and then epsilon. Now, the boundary epsilon one goes to zero of this cell uh, is made of vectors um, which are supported in locations one, two, five, six. This boundary uh, um, maps, so it, it is in the kernel of the twisters one, two, five, six, which uh, are easily shown to be boundary twisters of the amplitude one. So, so this is an example of a cell which maps to the boundary of the amplitude one. Um, Another example, again, we have the same D. This time I will draw. Um, so, uh, so, so we have, we have uh, uh, the same, uh, uh, same D, which is one, two, five, six. And, uh, uh, but this time, instead of considering the, um, epsilon one boundary, we consider the alpha one boundary. So we get vectors of this form. These vectors, they are not in the, uh, um, in the kernel of any boundary twister. They're in the kernel of a twister, but it's not a boundary twister. However, these, uh, um, these vectors, they also appear in, in a boundary of another cell. So now consider D prime, 
which is this cell. Okay, so it is rather similar. In both cases, we have a, 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 a single cord. It, it has the same uh, head, but not the same tail. The tail is shifted by one. And really, the, uh, the beta one boundary of this cell uh, just equals the alpha one boundary of the previous cell. That's the simplest example of shift that we may have. Now I will show a slightly more complicated shift, but it's not the most complicated shift. Um, so, okay, so now, now let's go to, um, the last example. And I think that I will, I will be good with the time. I should, oh, sorry. So, uh, um, okay, so now let's consider this example. So now K is two and we have two chords. Um, so in this cell, it is one, two, three, four, and three, four, five, six. Now in this cell, in the second cell, it is a three, four, five, six, and one, two, five, six. And uh, um, it can be seen that the P3, that the, the boundary obtained by making the three, four Plucker coordinates zero of B, is the same boundary obtained by taking the five, six Plucker coordinate of D prime to be zero. So you see that these two uh, diagrams, they share uh, the chord three, four, five, six. And well, the chord one, two, three, four is really shifted, but when we want to, to move the, the head of uh, um, one, two, three, four, which is the operation that we want to do here, uh, it is blocked by, by three, four, five, six. So in this case, the shift operation involves jumping over this uh, uh, second uh, chord. Okay, so, uh, um, uh, uh, well, these are uh, several examples of uh, uh, the general uh, phenomenon that we uh, obtain. And from here, finishing the, the, the proof is just by a, a simple algebraic topology argument. So um, what, what we show more or less is that uh, uh, is the following. So suppose that we have a, a point in the equilibrium which doesn't belong to the closure of BCFW cells. Uh, so we can assume it is an internal point. And we then take another internal point, which is in, in the interior of a BCFW cell, and we connect them by a path which is in the interior. Um, let me maybe draw it in the side. Um, so suppose that, uh, um, let's say that this is the amplitude one, and that uh, this is a BCFW cell. Here we have a point Q inside of it. Here we have a point P, and we connect them in a path which, which uh, uh, goes only in the interior. Now, um, by uh, standard transversality, we may assume that this path passes only through BCFW cells or their uh, uh, co-dimension one boundary. Of course, for dimension one boundaries, which do not pass to the boundary because we assume it is internal. But then, but then it actually cannot escape the, uh, 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 the union of, of, of the cells because we know that along this boundary, which it touches, which is not a boundary of the amplitude one, there is another BCFW cell. And then there is another and so on. So this argument can be, made rigorous, but you see the idea. So it, it really cannot escape uh, uh, the union of the closures, which is a, 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 a contradiction to, to, uh, um, to the existence of P, to the, to the assumption that um, the map is not subjective. Okay, so uh, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Lat. Thank you, Ran. Um, do you have any questions to ask? Uh, I could ask a question. Um, 
so yeah, so first, thank you for a really beautiful talk. Um, I was wondering, since you understand so much about the BCFW cells and their boundaries, would you be able to upgrade the triangulation results to a cell decomposition of the amplitohedron? Did you look at that at all? Uh, so we, we didn't uh, spend too much time uh, on, on thinking of it, but it seems that, uh, um, okay, it, it seems that, that our method generalize relatively easily uh, uh, to the uh, interior of the amplitude hydron. So you see that, that we, we had to study, the, we, we studied the interior slightly better because um, in order to show subjectivity, whenever we said that something goes to the boundary, okay, said, okay, it's in the boundary. So we didn't look at it too much. Um, it seems that, that uh, um, at least uh, regarding the parts which map to the, the for the mention two, three and so on, which map to the interior, uh, everything should should uh, work, and uh, I, I think that uh, you should obtain a cell decomposition. Regarding the boundary, we so I guess that the answer is, is positive that this technique should be strong enough. But I, I I don't want to say it in certainty because I, I didn't record it at all, and and um, and really uh, um, yeah. So so I, I think that the fair answer is that uh, well I believe that it, it is so. I believe that. It, um, that for interior it is easily seen, and for the boundary, probably it is also so. But I, I, I should check more. Thank you. Are there more questions? Uh, hi, Ryan. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I would like to ask you. I am not. Sure, I am not sure if uh, it's it was clear uh, because I. I I relate to, to your presentation, but I would like to ask you about the uh, important about the subjective. But um, in this case, in the last part, you uh, gave two examples in the case of k equal one and two. But I don't know if um, you can construct this subjective by higher uh, values of k in this case. Sorry, sorry. Uh, do, do you do you ask if if um. Sorry, uh, you ask if uh, um, if whenever I have higher k, I still have uh, um, for any boundary which doesn't map to the boundary of the amplitude on another cell. That, that, that's your question. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So so yeah. So actually, we can, and and it is it is um, well probably algebraically it relies on on that fact that I I uh, mentioned. Uh, um, earlier that um, for the domino form, uh, you get only two types of uh, uh, conditions, um, on some, of some conditions. One are on singletons, on uh, entries, and the other is on two by two matrices. And so, okay, probably that's, I mean, that, that's related to, to the reason that, that uh, uh, you can show it. Um, but, but yes, but actually what, what we show is, is, that, is that really uh, um, uh, you can define this uh, shift operation when, whenever you have a code dimension one boundary, which is, which is not mapped to the boundary of the amplitude hydron, and that this shift operation really, you know, pairs uh, uh, neighboring cells. Okay, I mean, any cell has more than one shift operation, right? It, it, theoretically, it can have a, a 4K shift operations. Usually, it's slightly less, but but uh, um, I, I mean, you know, you have one for each. Theoretically, you have one for each chord, and then uh, for, sorry, you have four for each chord for the tail and the head and right and left. Um, so and and you you just prove that that uh, any any uh, um, that, that the boundary which corresponds to the shift. Is also a boundary of the shifted cell, uh, okay, which corresponds again to to, to the shift. Um, but by the way, we, we also do it using decorated permutations, just by comparing permutations. But but actually, um, I, I don't know if it is more complicated or easier. Uh, but you can actually also prove it uh, just algebraically. Um, I mean, for example, uh, um, if you look at at this picture, uh, at, at this example. Then you see when, when I make uh, uh, the Plucker coordinate of D, the, of three, four of D, 
being zero, then then I can uh, I can add uh, then I I can do some um, uh, row operations that will add to the lower column a product of the uh, of the domino of the of the tail domino of C1, and uh, um, will will annihilate the uh, the um, places three four in the in the um, first row. And and you can you can just see that, that, that this really corres corresponds to the p five six bound, but probably I, I answered uh, too long to a short question. So the, yeah. the answer is yes. You you can do it for any. Um, okay. For, uh, for any okay. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Um, are there more questions? We can also conclude the, the formal part of the talk and then continue the discussions afterwards if someone uh, needs to go. So maybe we can we can do this. Let me just um, thank the run again and uh, we can continue chatting afterwards. Um, I just also wanted to say that um, so next uh, next week the, the, the seminar will be on Tuesday and uh, we're happy to have uh, Anna Siegel from Harvard talking about invariant theory for maximum likelihood estimations in connection with torus orbits and polytops. Um, so I hope to see you there. And for who wants to stay and continue the discussion with Ron, feel free to stay and uh, see you next, next week otherwise. Um, okay, so yeah, if now anyone um, has questions. I also have some questions in case um, I leave space to, to the audience if, if they want to ask any other questions, feel free. Um, okay, um, can I ask you a question? So I was um, curious about functionaries uh, that you were mentioning before. Um, basically, yeah, so um, of course, I mean, we, we were expecting that um, polynomials of high order in the twist coordinates would appear to describe um, like boundaries of the um, um, of BCFW cells, but in general also cells which are um, in, in bijective, so what we call generalized triangles in, uh, in our previous work. Um, and I was actually curious whether you have um, a grasp on how they look like in general. Um, because I know that uh, the, the quadratic ones are the ones um, actually kind of uh, where, where we were also expecting, but in general, you can derive them by promoting also in a recursive way. And I was wondering whether you have a grasp on what is the form of this functionary. And maybe even like, do you have an upper bound, given a BCFW, given a K and N, do you have an upper bound on the degree for any BCFW cell of, the, of that degree K and N for what's the degree of this uh, functionary? Um, and in general, this is connected to the question how you can, uh, so you, you can describe each BCFW cell as the region where um, some entries are positive or, or certain sign and some two times two minors, but you can also rewrite these, I guess, in terms of this polynomial of twister coordinates. I was wondering whether you have a more explicit or nicer description on these uh, two parts. Okay, so, um, okay, first of all, um, Okay, one uh, um, one uh, bound for the um, okay. So, so I, I I guess what I say is correct. Chaim uh, and if you disagree, you may uh, may correct me. Uh, so I guess that probably the nesting is a bound for uh, uh, the um, dimension for the uh, degree. Yes. So so it gives you an exponential bound in the number of codes. Because each each time you have something quadratic in, in what you had before. Yeah. So so I mean I mean it's not I we don't know if it's tight that for I mean for your next question unless unless run it as a guess. Could be like two to the k minus one could be the degree or something like that. <laughs> or no. Um so um I um, k minus one, you say? I, th I think we had an example with k equals three when you needed, when you couldn't do with a quadratic, right? Yeah, I think that we yeah. had, a, yeah. right? Two to the k minus we had an example in k equals three. Maybe it was not for VCFW. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So yeah. for k equals three, th there was an example in which quadratic was not enough. But yeah. I think that, that uh, BCFW tend to be slightly simpler than others. I think yes, yes. that uh, 
uh, we, we, the, okay, so I think that for example three, if I remember correctly, maybe maybe a, 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 a three was enough. But 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 if you are not BCFW, I, I remember that we we once found a, a quartic yeah. function. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we should explain that we also try to play with it and separate the uh, cells that are not part of the BCFW formulation. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. I. Also for K equals to true, for example, I mean, I guess the BCFW ones are, um, I mean, we are quadratic enough for BCFW, I think for K equals to true, but there are also other cells for which quadratic is not is not enough. Like the boundaries are not quadratic um, uh, things. Okay. Um, so, but then, uh, so the question was, are your functionary um, that you're using to separate cells um, also boundaries of, of some cells? Like, okay, of course, if you have two cells which are touching to separate them, you need the boundary. But um, I mean, in general, all the functions that are appearing in this recursion to separate are boundaries of some BCFW cells or could be also other. Well, the quadratic ones are. Yeah. I, I think that actually, okay, it's, it, it, it's a good question. It's also, okay. okay. I, I I don't know the answer, you know, in a second, but I think that we can think about it and, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, because because it should be very simple from what uh, um, from what we did. I mean, yeah, uh, actually, this question has to be made precise. So you mean that for any functionary that is in use, there exists two cells. I yeah. mean, it 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 could intersect other cells, maybe. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. There, there exist two cells that are on both sides. Yeah, two adjacent cells that are separated just by it. in principle what i mean is that in principle i mean there are there might be some cells and you can cook up any uh function which separates them but uh, i want to know whether you choose the ones which for which it is a boundary of some pairs of cells somehow or some kind of okay. yeah for sure we, we didn't you know we didn't choose it to be like this it, it could be you know a, a, a posterior like this this is something that i get that we can easily check but i don't want to say okay. Okay. thinking but yeah it, it, it could be a byproduct of, of, of what we do to yeah, generate. That's what I, I, I expect, but I should say uh, regarding what Chaim said, so uh, in, in, in uh, um, uh, the work of, uh, of you and uh, Lauren and uh, um, Melifa, uh, so um, uh, you found the triangulations, I don't know if it is for all triangulations, but you found triangulations in which you have uh, certain crystals which have a fixed sign on any cell in the triangulation. Um, this is not the case here. I mean, it's not that if you have a separating functionary, even if it's a boundary functionary, it will usually have a, a, a fixed sign on all the other cells in the uh, triangulation. It, it is mean, even worse. Uh, it could be, it could have fixed signs for some matrices Z and not have fixed signs for other matrices Z. Yes, but, but in particular, yeah. in particular, um, I mean, yes, that, that, that's that's uh, that's true. But but in particular, uh, um, I mean, it's even even the boundary functionaries uh, um, may have uh, uh, signs which are um, we, uh, may have mixed signs on 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 some cells. Not only you know more general functionaries that, that we constructed. If if what we constructed could be more general than boundary, what, what I'm not sure. But um, but uh, so, so in this sense, already, already, you know, it adds some complication that um, you don't see in the uh, M equal two case. Now, regarding your other question, okay, first of all, the, na the naive answer is that, okay, so we have inequalities in terms of uh, entries and two by two minors. Each of them, each entry, and hence also each two by two minor can be represented uh, uh, yeah. by uh, twistors. So, um, Whenever you have, uh, um, whenever you have uh, um, the, uh, um, so, so, so you can describe any cell just by uh, the, the intersection of, of these things. And, but I mean, whenever you, you, you have the right sign, you can really, you know, solve the inverse problem. Uh, so, so you can really describe the image of each cell. In that sense, it also gives you a, a very, very inefficient, unlike, uh, for example, the, the description from the unwinding uh, that we agreed on paper. Um, mm -hmm. so, so there you have a very compact and nice uh, uh, description of, of uh, at least conjectural description of the, uh, uh, of the amplitude one in terms of, um, you know, just linear crystals and so on. 
In our case, you do get a description, which doesn't, uh, uh, so you, you don't need to say anything about the domain. You, it is really a description inside uh, the uh, Grassmannian KK plus M, but it is, okay, it is not a compact description. And it is also, um, uh, it, and it is, yeah, it is also, it uses very, very high uh, degree. Um, uh, okay, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, but of course, this description uh, is uh, heavily motivated by the fact that if you write down scattering amplitudes in BCW ways, then the poles that you see are actually these polynomials that appear in the in the boundaries. So then, um, physically, it's motivated by that. But I I agree that you can do a kind of sign flip triangulation where you just have uh, twisters um, describing the the region of uh, of each part. Um, okay, thanks. Um, um, so just to clarify, when you see these higher degree functionaries, so, so say you have two BCFW cells that maybe touch not in codimension one, but lower codimension, then do you expect these functionaries to be describing like that point where they're, that lower dimensional face where they're meeting or um, is that, yeah, is that how you think about it or or do you have any sense of what it's describing? Um, so. So, you know, I, I think that, well, the, 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 even, even in the induction process that we, that we made, we didn't, uh, um, I mean, the, okay, so there were many choices of functionals that could have separated. I mean, of course, if you have two neighboring cells, you have a single, uh, uh, I mean, all those choices will coincide. But in general, they, they will not coincide. I mean, if you remember, there is this, uh, we have the, uh, several algorithms for constructing cells. And actually, <laughs> you can write even more algorithms, probably it's not just about But um, more or less for any, you know, for any uh, um, such algorithm, you, you, so you can find functionaries which are, are um, you know, behaves nice with respect to, to it, for which you, you can prove that they are separating. So I guess that when, when you have uh, things in code dimension two, what you will get is that, uh, you know, some constructions will give you, a, 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 you know, one code dimension, one separator, and the other will give you another. That's, that's my guess, but, but okay, uh, giving a, you know, a better answer will probably also be related to what Matteo asked before. And I think that, um, yeah, I mean, for sure we should we should look at it, but um, but uh, I mean, my guess is that in this case you will usually have more than one uh, functionality that you that you can use. Mm -hmm. 